Hey everybody, welcome to the Player's Take episode 55. I am your host Justin DeSimone, joined by my co-host, the best player in Apex Legends, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up? What's up everybody? For those of you who haven't listened before, the Player's Take is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app of choice. We're going to jump right in this week and get right to it with what we've been playing. Montrell, what have you been playing? Tell the people. I'm sure they are itching to know. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh my God, he wasn't paying attention. Jesus Christ. Uh. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts 3, the Remind <laughs> DLC. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And Apex yeah. Legends and some PUBG uh, mm-hmm. and a little bit of um, League of Legends. Mm-hmm. Haven't really touched The Witcher in a couple of weeks. So I'm about to probably mm-hmm. jump right back into that. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you have anything to say about those games? <laughs> uh, Can I focus? Jeez Louise. Oh, my God. He wasn't ready. Yeah, he wasn't I, ready for just, the podcast. He jumped right guys. back into it. He wasn't it. ready right. for me. Just throw it to him right away. All right. Like, yeah, all right, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, so uh-huh. um, playing Kingdom Hearts 3, and I know it's like mm-hmm. uh, just a little tidbit on it. Uh, I really like the combat in the game. I think that changed my whole viewpoint in the game. Mm-hmm. It's funny how like just a couple of frame that is in like animation, a couple of animations can make a difference. Mm-hmm. Now that Sora plays a lot more faster, the combat makes more sense now why there's more enemies on the screen because you can handle a lot more enemies on the screen. Mm-hmm. And I'm really I'm really impressed with the uh Osaka team did for the data uh the data battles. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know if they had a consultant there for the Tokyo team or something of that mm-hmm. nature, but they did a really good job. Or for maybe it. they just listened to the fans. Right? Yeah, I'm, that's 100% true. Because I think uh, when Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, there wasn't really any reception. Mm-hmm. Like, there was reception, right? But it wasn't as much as... Uh, well, it's know, harder. it was harder to get feedback back Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Because it was like, what, 2004 or some shit? 2005. 2005. Yeah. So... Um, with this game, I think they listen to a lot of the reception. I think L- Namor is especially listen to that because you can tell through the Remind DLC just the story mm-hmm. why he explained the story and everything of that nature. And um, right, right. Uh, yeah, the combat is just vastly improved and things of that nature, and I really appreciate that. Um, I if thought if the if this one point nine or saying one point ten now, but if the one point nine patch was at the beginning of the game when we mm-hmm. first played it. I would have gave this game a lot higher rating. It would have probably yeah. been like a seven point five for me. Man, yeah, we were. T- I mean, we were talking about this a little earlier with Dennis, and like, it's just so unfortunate because, like, I can forgive a game, or I, I can I can deal with a game that has a bad story if the combat's really good, or yeah. the gameplay gameplay is really good, good, or the gameplay loop, and it has like really fun, um, you know, side stuff and things like that. But, man, you know, a game that has a bad story and bad gameplay. That's just a rap recipe for disaster, which is exactly what Kingdom Hearts 3 was. It was the gameplay. Like, the combat was not fun, and the story was not good either. And yeah, yeah. Dude, both those things in tandem made me not want to play that game at all. Yeah. Like, I had to force myself to beat it, and that is not a good situation. For somebody who loves Kingdom Hearts as much as I do, and you do, yeah. this is not a good place to be, you know? So yeah. it's good to see that they've, they've hopefully fixed it you know, to a degree, but they can't fix, they're, they're never going to fix Yeah, they, the they can't fix everything. They can't fix the story. Uh, mm-hmm. The gameplay is a lot different without attractions, without that there, like. Yeah, you can, you, you can turn it off or is it turned off by default with you, the you can. It's critical. turned off by default with critical, I, I believe, because I, I just went, as soon as I started the game, I went and turned it off. Like, that mm-hmm. was it. Right, right, right. Um, <clears throat> but I believe it, now within the menus, you can turn it off uh, on proud mode and stuff can like that. Can you believe that they advertised the game with that so heavily? That yeah, was in yeah. every promotional trailer with the fucking rides, man. And to think that most of us hate it to a degree that we want to turn it off. You know, it's like. Well, they made the game too easy. Like, yeah, yeah. They undermined Well, they were too it. prevalent, too. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. just absurd. There it wasn't was like, any. Uh, any penalty. You weren't, yeah, you weren't there was penalized. No risk. Yeah. yeah. So with the links, you were penalized by it takes up your whole MP bar or something of that mm-hmm. nature. So mm-hmm. it makes sense those those be powerful. But with this attraction, you hit an enemy and it just randomly spawns. And on top of that, um, I learned how to do key, keyblade combos with different sets of keyblades and stuff like that. So it can just interrupt that combo too and everything of that nature. Right, so right, right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they gave you that option. It vastly improved the game for me uh, as far as that. 
I mean, this this gameplay, I can honestly say now that it's better than Kingdom Hearts 2 combat wise, which is a very strong feat to say because Kingdom Hearts 2 final mix. (laughs) Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2 final mix was really good. You're Uh, you're a uh, KH2 FM truther, man. Yeah, I'm a fanboy. You've always been a a truther for that game, man. Yeah, man. uh, The combat, just little tidbits that it did improve the combat. But the thing is, I always saw the I I I think I said this in the earlier game. that's my last point. I already said this in the in the earlier podcast about it. The combat had the potential to be better than KH two, and mm-hmm. they saw that potential. And now I realize I come to realize with the new patch, because uh, patch one point nine, they introduced the finishers and they changed some different things. They made Sora a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. He plays way faster and way better than the other characters. Because I went back and played other characters throughout the story, and I'm just like. I don't want to play these characters well, at you, all. It's like you're talking about removing frames makes it appear, well, not even appear. Literally, everything's faster about the character when you do that. So yeah. it's like the game plays faster as a result, which is exactly what Kingdom Hearts should be. It should be fast. Yeah. It shouldn't be like, dude, that's what's so weird about Kingdom Hearts 3 is that it was like slow and plotting and like yeah. Sora was like stapled to the ground at times and like floaty when he was in the air and everything about him was just slow and hard to control. And yeah. It, so it's it's good to see they, I guess, kind of got that message and improved that because it's making me like, you're, you've you made me curious to play it, but I'm still so jaded yeah. jaded about yeah. the story that i don't even want to bother like it, yeah. it I, as i said i've said this for like two weeks now i will play this game in the future at some point in time i don't know when but i'll come around to it again but yeah. uh, and, and like i said i totally get it like i said I, I only bought the remind dlc because i had a gift card so mm-hmm. i did that and i mean i don't regret the purchase at all i mean it showed me but if if I was to pay for this, I would be mad. Like mm, thirty bucks is steep. Thirty bucks is steep, and you don't get a lot. Like that, you can play the game in its current form. Yeah. With the one point nine patch, because that patch is free, and mm-hmm. you can you can experience that better combat. The without, better game. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't have the game anymore, so. <laughs> oh yeah, ex- yeah, I know. You I can't experience back. anything. But uh, so, can we talk about real quick though, like Square's bullshittery with uh, releasing the games on Xbox? So yeah, they, I really feel bad for Xbox players, They are man. dickholes, man, because they released Kingdom Hearts 3 on Xbox One last year. This was the, That was the first Kingdom Hearts game to ever be on an Xbox platform. And now they are releasing the 1.5, 2.5 HD collection, and then the, H, the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue collection. And they are releasing them at the release price they were released at in, like, 2017 on PS4. So... Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 2.5 is going to be 49.99. It's and this is out today, day of recording, uh, February 18th. And then Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue is going to be 59.99. And all, dude, th- this is wild. I can't believe they went with this price again for the HD because this was not worth it when it first came out in 2017. <laughs> yeah, everybody called this out when it came out. It was not worth it because it was literally Dream Drop Distance HD. Uh, a two-hour, basically, demo of Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, Kingdom Hearts Point Two: Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage. Yeah. And then Kingdom Hearts uh, Cross Back Cover is a movie that's like an hour and 15 minutes, and that's fifty nine ninety nine. whereas the 1.5, 2.5 is literally four games for 50 bucks. Like... I think they they clearly went overboard with the pricing on this. It's, it's oh, pretty, yeah. It's it, pretty crazy to me that they... Uh, they are charging these prices for games that a are 10, 20, almost 20 years old. And then at the same time, games that have been out on other consoles that you can get for like 10, $15, you're, they're charging full price for the Xbox users. They're just like gouging these people. Yeah. Like, they're, they're definitely exploring the Xbox fan base and I feel bad for them. When, you know, yeah. Like you said, on the PS in uh, platform, I think it's 30 bucks on the digital. Yeah, and then yeah. if you want to find a used copy somewhere, it's oh, yeah, way 20, yeah, like well, 20, this is also, bucks even bigger an even bigger slap in the face with the fact that they just announced a Kingdom Hearts all in one collection oh it has Kingdom PS4 Hearts 3 that has Kingdom Hearts 3 in it is going to have all these games that are in both of these collections plus Kingdom Hearts 3 for 50 bucks on PS4 and it's coming like next month or 2 months from now yeah, that's wild man like what the like what and you know what's even worse too this goes further is that there was an all in one collection last year on PS4 
before Kingdom Hearts 3 came yeah, out. Yeah, 2.9. <laughs> it was the whole, like, all these games besides Kingdom Hearts 3 were in it for, for 50 bucks. So yeah. it's like, what is... Do you think Disney's doing this? I don't know, man. But if I was an Xbox customer, I would be pissed right now. This is bullshit. Like, yeah, and they're advertising it. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like oh, now, yeah, new content. Yeah, yeah, now finally Xbox players can get to experience it, which I'm glad more people get to experience it. But right. at the same time... Right. What? Like, but it's not fair. This exactly. is not fair. They should have exactly. done the all in one collection and and at least I don't know. There's no reason not to do like they're 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 just being greedy. There's just no other there's no other defense. Like there's no defense for this in my opinion. Like they yeah. are just being greedy. Yeah, you're right. It's, um, it's it is greedy. So I hate to see it. It sucks. It sucks. Um all right. Uh so what have I been playing? Um <clears throat> PUBG and Apex Legends like you. So I guess we let's let's talk about this real quick. So we've been playing PUBG, and uh, I think we talked about last week. We were kind of running into some hackers and stuff. And Montreal and I actually did some research because there are tracking websites that track player statistics, and uh, also they track your games as well and get let you watch uh, over the head overhead replays of your games uh, in a browser. And did some research and found out that we were not running into nearly as many hackers as we thought, more than likely. Um, and we probably just suck, but we've played a lot this week. <laughs> I've probably played four or five times since the last time we recorded. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Cause dude, I played yesterday, Sunday, Monday, or no, sorry. Yesterday, Sunday, Saturday. I think, did we play Friday? No, we didn't no, play Friday. No, it was Valentine's Day. Um, so. Thursday we played though. And I think we played Wednesday too, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. We played a lot last week, so. Um, given all that though, we had a really rough week, uh, overall and we were getting really pissed at this game again. And, and frankly, I don't think we were running into hackers that much, but the thing is there's a difference between aim botters, which we ran into a few of those and they're super obvious when you run into them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like ridiculous at this point when you see one, but, and, and I think it, this, this research we did helped me get better at recognizing these people. Um, versus somebody who's just better than me. But I think the thing that we're still not sure about is that's really hard to kind of ga- gauge is people using radar hacks. And this is something I think that PUBG is going to struggle with for a while because they're really hard to detect. Um, and they're not uh, they're not intrusive in the game the way an aimbot is. Like, they do not forcibly change game mechanics or anything like that. Like, it's really just an added thing into the game interface. Um, so... And I don't think Blue Hole has the capability to figure it out really on their own. So, um, I mean, at least hopefully they can get rid of the aim botters. But, yeah, the radar stuff is really frustrating because, like, people just know where you are and you don't know where they are. Like, you can hear them maybe, but yeah. if they're smart about the way they approach you, there's nothing you can do, man. And yeah. it's ha- it happened to us a lot where people would just turn around, know exactly where we are, and fucking murder us without us even moving, you know? And it's like, it's just... Yeah, it's getting really... It's a bit much. It's getting really bad. Um, The radar, uh, it's like an overlay, so it's not... It doesn't present, present itself as an actual hack. Like, I think, like, Snakes was telling us, one of our friends, who's, like, very into the dark web world of gaming. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he was telling us that, and... I read an article too that you know even at the official PUBG tournament they didn't detect this or notice this hack until three years oh after the God, tournament yeah. was after and they yeah. they relinquished or they took back the the championship even from though that. people were saying this guy was hacking yeah exactly yeah, which is ridiculous um, like they didn't even look into it. like it, like it doesn't take you three years to confirm something like that exactly like, but that's how hard this hack is to, uh, it's hard to detect and yeah. uh. We noticed that a lot of players, it's so hard to detect that we're, they're using it on console platforms, where which is a lot more secure than Man, dude, PC. That, that's crazy that it's happened yeah. there because, yeah, dude, to, and Snakes was describing this, and I know this too. In order to hack a PlayStation or an Xbox, you have to fucking jailbreak the console, Yeah, which means that like you it's a lot harder to actually get it back online after you do that. Like exactly. Sony and Xbox have or Microsoft have protections in place for that kind of thing, you know? Um, jailbroken units are not usually like you, you, you need to know what you're doing for that stuff. So, exactly. um, yeah. So it got to the point though, where we got frustrated, like, cause I, I dude, I really like PUBG. It's, I, it's just, it is my style BR. It just sucks so much that we have all these issues and you keep dealing with crashes and snakes crashed and, yeah. <laughs> and it's just lag for you guys. And I, even I'm starting to see like frame drops. It's not enough where it's affecting me, but I'm noticing like my game's getting a little fuzzy sometimes. 
Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm fucking I get a twenty eighty TI in my computer. Like I shouldn't have, have any problem running this game. It's just the game is just optimized like shit. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And and then we, we decided we got frustrated enough where we decided to play Apex on Sunday and playing that game just <laughs> reinforces everything we just said that this game, that game, on the other hand, is wonderfully optimized, runs like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's just like it feels like a triple A game and it is a triple A game and it's like my appreciation for that is like not it cannot be stated enough exactly, as much as yeah. i like PUBG, i just cannot i just man i just wish the game played like apex in terms of the way it feels and yes. everything and the yeah. frames yep. and and just the even loading the game loans loads like a snap man it's like it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing you play the game you're in a match in like 15 20 seconds after you hit the hit the play button it's exactly like, yeah it's it's crazy so it's it's what are your thoughts though on Apex? Because you hadn't you hadn't played it really before me either, really, right? Well, I played it a little bit on uh, Xbox, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't have a squad, so I played it once with the squad, but no one was really talking, so it wasn't really as fun. Yeah. Um. So I never really touched it again, but because I, I feel like BRs are people you have to experience with, like you it know, is a squad. It's a squad based game. Yeah. It's so, definitely. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> After playing it with you guys, I thought I was on the fence of it too. I thought it was gonna be really cartoony, but uh, I, I I saw the potential there. And this game is really fun. I have to get used to it uh, because the, the time to kill is a lot longer than PUBG. Yeah. So I'm used to like putting a clip in somebody and they're they're going down. Whereas I think this- it's one of those things we're gonna have to get used to this. But I just think this game. I think once we get good and we're actually precise with our shots, you can yeah. kill somebody in a full clip. Yeah, you definitely yeah. can. You just have to hit eighty percent of the shots. Yeah, exactly. And, but the thing is, I didn't find myself getting as mad when I died. Like I didn't. Oh, I'm I didn't, the same way. Yeah. I didn't go look for hackers or anything like that. Look right. up his profile and see if he's hacking and stuff. Because I'm like, yeah, that was legit. I, I mean, I, but I, see, I, we I, suck right now though, so yeah. we assume everybody's better than us for the most part. Yeah. And I think when we get to the point where we are in PUBG, where we're like middling in terms of player skill, like yeah. I think we'll be more in tune with like people cheating and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. just right now I just assume everyone's better than me, which is probably the case because yeah. like, dude, I was having the, 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 the game is very different from PUBG because PUBG, the shooting in PUBG is very heavy and like it, it, the guns do not fire. Like there's a lot more recoil in PUBG. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's bullet drop. Is, that is a lot more extreme in PUBG, um, particularly with certain weapon types like SMGs and even ARs to a degree have extreme levels of, of, of bullet drop. Whereas in Apex, there's very minimal bullet drop. Yeah, um, exactly. It's not it's not that extreme, and uh, I the the recoil on the guns is basically non-existent um, from what I've seen so far. Like the guns I've used, like it's it's like a laser beam. Yeah. And that's, there's no problem with that. It's an arcade shooter, so that's kind of how those games are yeah. generally. Um, but it's just something I have to get used to. I'm used to my gun bucking like crazy and I have to like <laughs> yeah. pull the, pull it down, pull it down, you know? Um, and the fact that I don't have to do that in apex is really throwing me off. Like I'm not playing very well so far the, yeah. the, the two nights we've played. And, uh, it is frustrating me from that perspective. Cause it's like, I know I can play well, like I know I have a good shot, but it's like, it's just, man, these guns are like, they fire so fast. Some of them and, and they're, the recoil is so low and, and enemies move so fast too. Like, yeah, exactly. Like player movement is really fast compared to PUBG. So it's hard to stay on people, you know, yeah. to stay locked on somebody. And I've noticed that other players have trouble with this as well. Cause we don't die that fast either. It's not like these people are murdering us. Like the way we die in PUBG in like two seconds or yeah. not even two seconds, like half a second, you know, it's like, we have a chance. There's very few encounters where somebody's come up on me and killed me instantly. Like exactly, yeah. You you have a chance to get away even even if you fuck up, you know. Which yeah. I, I really do like that about this game um, so far. And also, I really like the respawn mechanic. The fact yes. that you can pick yeah. up teammates' banners and and uh, pick them like respawn them at a respawn zone if you win a fight, you know, and you lose somebody. Yep. I love that. And honestly, I'm at the point in PUBG where I think that as, as unrealistic as that feature would be in that game, I just feel like it's such a it'd be such an improvement to the game because squads in PUBG suck right now because we have so many games where one of us fucking dies and that person so has early to watch, in the game. Yeah. yeah. Has to watch 20, 25 minutes of the other three of us playing the fucking game. And it's just not fun, dude. It's yeah, not it's fun not at all. It's, it's really frustrating and unenjoyable. So I don't, I mean, it, maybe it'd be an optional thing or something or some, but I, I just feel like, I just love to see it. I just feel like the community wouldn't, 
take well to that. They would. They wouldn't take well to that mechanic. Um, they would. Having been played PUBG, I'm going to hashtag PUBG on this podcast as well um, because I really want the Reddit to see or hear this statement that I'm about to say. Kerrigan is nothing like Apex Legends. Oh my having God. played Apex Legends, yeah. it's nothing like this game at all. It doesn't feel the same. Yes, the maps may be a little bit of the same size, and you may have a lot more engagements on Kerrigan, but it is nothing. But, dude, Apex, I feel like Apex's map is way bigger than Kerrigan, and yeah, you do you not move, run into people that much. Yeah, you just move faster. That's it. You do. And, yeah, dude, we, like, honestly, if we want to avoid combat in Apex, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. It's exactly. really not that yeah. hard. Like, if you go to the outside, no one goes on the outside of the map. Yeah. It's, it's just not, they just don't go there, you know? Um, for good reason, actually. I think the game, I, I've noticed this more than I do in PUBG, where I feel like higher tier loot is actually really important in Apex. Yeah, it Whereas is. Whereas in PUBG, I feel like I can fight most people with level one armor and crappy, stuff. Yeah, crappy stuff. As that long happens as my to us trigger all the time. finger is good. Yeah. We, we'll have level three helmets and level three <sighs> armor, and we'll still get shitted on by someone with the AK with no scope. And I just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, whereas with Apex, like, yeah, the gold tier loot, if someone has level four gold tier loot, they're probably going to win because they... Well, yeah, because that, like, shield thing that you can put when you're down, the gold one lets you resurrect yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that's fucking insane. But so. all that loot is fine, fine within hot zones of the game. So yeah. you get paid. You're There's a re- risk-reward. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what... I think that's what pub, Especially Erringal. Erringal needs oh. loot in the cities. And that's what I was trying to say with Erringa. Um, That's why I don't like that map because in Miramar, I feel like those maps can be hot um, and have the same level of engagement intensity as um, Kerrigan and Sandhawk if they put loot in the high tier towns, like mm-hmm. all the towns, like Los Leones and things of that nature. They, mm-hmm. they put um, stuff in that and kind of disincentivize people to stop dropping outside and scatter throughout the map and just making it a bore fest because... Right. I mean, <sighs> dude, I think I just think PUBG at this point, it needs something to incentivize killing people. Yes. Yeah. Because right now the game has nothing in that way. And that is the game's biggest flaw. And that's why people camp because there is no incentive to getting kills. If you're trying to win the game, getting kills is honestly a detriment to you because you're telling everyone else where you are. You know, and exactly, it's like yeah. it's it's you're telling them either where to avoid or where to go, you know, and it's like. It's just not a – like, Apex, I don't feel that way at all. I want to fight everybody I see, you know? It's like because yep. – I, I don't – well, A, because the combat's really fun, but B, because it's like they have shit – they could have shit that is, like, way better than what I'm wearing, you know? Exactly, if we can yeah. kill them, if we can manage to kill them or outskill them, it could be a huge boon for us, you know? Like, player corpses, like, so far, playing this game is, like, crazy. The shit I'm finding on these people, it's like – and I feel like PUBG's similar, but – it's like, I mean, honestly, am I really going to pick up a car versus like a an SKS? Is that that big of a difference? Like, yeah, some people are going to argue, yeah, if you can hit a headshot, it's a one hit, you know, but of course it is. But it's like in every situation, though, are you going to be able to hit at one shot with a car? Like, it, I mean, you can win car versus SKS. It's possible. It's like it's not it, it doesn't feel as stark as Apex with that for me with the guns. So, yeah, I like the gunplay. I just feel like even with other games. The bullet drop is not as dr- dramatic. Like this game, it has dramatic bullet drop, and that's because the yeah, maps PUBG. are. Yeah, it's yeah. just. And I understand it, but it's just like it's just so fucking dramatic. Even like Battlefield doesn't have dramatic bullet drop like that. The older Battlefield games, which are which weren't as arcadey as the new ones are, like. Mm-hmm. They had realistic dr- bullet drop, but it was still manageable. But well, it's to the point where I don't bother fighting people at certain distances. Yeah, because dude, you have to aim like, like almost with them out of your scope sometimes to hit them. Like, exactly, it's the bullet drops that severe. Even with snipers, forget about fucking ARs, dude. If you have an AR as your long range, you're fucked. You are <laughs> fucked. You're not hitting anybody that isn't within a hundred, hundred fifty meters. You know? Yeah, it's maybe like, it just sounds like us bitching about it. We're not good enough. I don't know. Maybe we need. We're to not. No, more. I think that's the thing that I've recognized recently is like we're not that we're not as good as we think we are. And yeah. and I'm I'm at the point now where I'm like thinking about how do I hit the next level of skill in PUBG. Yeah, you know? I am too. It's just I don't know where to practice at. Like, Me either. No, and that's the that's the other problem with the game is the game is not conducive to learning because 
this is the problem is like when you play in a style where you're trying to win all the time, you don't fight. So if you don't fight, you're not going to get better at gunplay, which means that you in situations where you need to fight to win, you're going to lose more exactly. often than you win because you never fight. So <laughs> you're not improving and you do it so infrequently that the times you do fight aren't actually helping you get better because by the time you do it again, you haven't done it in a while. So you don't actually like learn anything from those engagements. Exactly, yeah. So that's kind of what happened to us. And this is why I thought Kerrigan was such a good thing for us because we were fighting all the time, dude. And I felt like we were getting better. Like I felt like my shots were getting better and I was hitting sniper shots like crazy. I was even winning close range like crazy too. And uh, I was just playing the game a lot better. And then they put Kerrigan out of its own queue and back into the main queue. And now I feel like, like, we, like I feel like my skills are degrading again. Like I'm not fighting very much because we're we're so obsessed with winning that we're like never fighting anybody. And I'm like, I just want to be a player who's aggressive because I want to get to the point in PUBG where I feel like I can win every encounter we get in. Yeah, you know, and I don't want to get to that point too. And we're not there, so. But even if we do try to play aggressive, like we try to do hot drops, the loot. It's just terrible, man. It's just terrible. I think on Sandhawk and Kerrigan, it's fine. But, yeah, Aaron Gal and Miramar, I think Aaron Gal in particular is just I, – I don't want to ever drop hot on that map unless <laughs> I'm – unless I'm not – I don't want to play the map. But in that case, I'll usually just quit out at this point. Yeah. Because, yeah, hot dropping on the map is fucking useless. You'll go in five buildings and not even find a pistol. It's just completely absurd. Like, it's it's ridiculous. And, and if the Reddit wants that, fine, guys. We, we should just put you in your own queue, though, because I don't want to play that game. Like, I'm yeah. sick and tired of that game. If they had, like, an arcade version version of this of of PUBG where yeah. there, there are more drops mm -hmm. I would play that like yep me too it's 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 getting kind of ridiculous now so yeah. and uh, dude it's at the point where we like we you in particular and this is hilarious to say like Miramar more than you like Erangel and yeah. I feel the same way <laughs> and that map is fucking huge but dude I actually feel like the map's in a good spot right now for the most part like it's we get, we get good engagements and now on top of that uh the vehicles are not as scarce as they are in Aaron no. so we can drive all the way. We well, can... And the topology is better too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's more cover and you're there's more elevation, so you can at least use the elevation to your advantage for cover at times. Whereas in Aaron it's just flat, open fucking fields. There's no trees. There's no rocks for like a hundred meters. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it just it just sucks. I hate that fucking map, man. I just want them to get rid of it. I'm like hoping they bring Vikendi back and they just axe Aaron permanently, but that's not gonna happen. That's not so. gonna happen. That's the original map. It's man. the original map. It's never going anywhere, even though it's trash, but um, okay. Um, other than uh, PUBG and Apex, I've uh, I also finished uh, DBZ Kakarot this week, this weekend. Um, I platinumed it on PS4. Um, I am done with this game, but it's uh, it's a good game. It's fine. I said this a few weeks ago when we had Dennison on, um, but it's uh, I think the game could be a lot more than it is. It's a really unfortunate thing that the more I played this game, the more obvious it became that they didn't want me to play this game the way I wanted to play it. They wanted me to play the game they wanted me to play. And it was really shitty because, like, I think running around this world and flying around and doing side quests is actually really fun. Doing yeah. a lot of the side activities in this game is really fun, even though the side quests, for the most part, are shit. <laughs> um, it's still fun, though, because it's like, I'm the one who wants to go do them. You know, it's like I have my own player agency here and I'm like going and helping people as Gohan or Vegeta or, or Goku. Whereas the game though is structured in a way where you're, you're like, you're like holding on to the back of a roller coaster and it's fucking just dragging you through it. Yeah. And you, you, the, sometimes the roller coaster stops and lets you get off for like five minutes and you get to walk around and, and do something. But then you, an alarm ri bell rings and you have to get back on the roller coaster and it just drags you on for another like fucking 10 hours. And <laughs> it's like, the game doesn't let you do what you want. Like when you're in the middle of the sagas, like there's very few side quests. There's huge portions of the game where you can't even go to the world map. Like the game is just like, no, you have to go here. And sometimes even it's so bad where the game will literally let you control the character, put your objective in front of you when you're about to fight somebody. And if you try to fly away, there will be an invisible wall around the objective. And wow. it would be like, it'll turn your character around and be like, oh, I can't do, I can't, I need to go over here right now. And it's like, God, are you kidding me? Like, I get it. You need to adhere to the Dragon Ball Z canon to some degree, but fuck, it's a video game. Let me yeah. play it the way I want. You I kind of figured that was going to happen. That's why when I saw the trailers for the game, I was just like, mm, I guess. I mean, yeah. 
so I, I think if you like DBZ, it's fine. You'll have fun. But I think dude, the other thing with this is the RPG mechanics are just like the, the balance in this game is completely out of fucking whack. They clearly didn't know, don't know how to make an RPG at this studio because, and like, it's weird because DBZ you think would work this way, but unfortunately by the end of the game, things were so broken that I just think they lost the plot, I guess, of like balance because in the beginning of the game, the fights actually take a while. Like you fight the first fight against Raditz is like, takes like five, 10 minutes. It's a long fight. Cause your character's weak as shit. Yeah. You, you actually really feel like Goku and Piccolo did fighting Raditz in the show. Like he's way stronger than you. Like he's doing like four times as much damage as you are. Like it's ridiculous. And you have less health than he does. Like, and it's, it's crazy. He feels more powerful than you. Like he actually should. Yeah, yeah. And you go through the Saiyan saga, and it, it and it still feels that way for the most part. Nappa's pretty challenging. Vegeta's pretty challenging. But when Goku arrives, you know, it kind of evens the playing field a little bit. But it should, you know, because that's how it was in the show. So, but then when you get to Namek, this issue, it, it just starts getting worse, where the battles stop feeling that way, where you're fighting, say, Raccoon as Vegeta or something, and the battle's easy. It's, like, not hard like raccoon's not hitting you that hard you're doing more damage than raccoon you have more health than raccoon it's like even though at that point in time vegeta can't even touch him like in the show he's like barely doing any damage to him yeah you know yeah. and it's like it starts that balance has fallen away at this point and this problem gets worse and worse and worse and worse as the game goes on to the point which by the end of the game the boo saga and post game you're destroying everything dude like goku vegeta and gohan are insane by the end of this game they have ultimate versions of all their special moves like vegeta has like an ultimate final flash and uh goku has like the ultimate uh ultimate limit breaker kamehameha or whatever and dude these versions of these moves up up until this point the moves weren't op but at this point this is what i would literally do even fighting bosses that are supposed to be hard i would literally have vegeta use super final flash and it would take off two-thirds of whatever i'm fighting's health this being a boss like Cell or Frieza or what have you, or even Boo, and it would take off two thirds of their health, and then I'd have Goku use his Kamehameha and it killed it, it killed the enemy. I wouldn't even move. <laughs> That's how OP these characters got at this point in the game. Like, and normal fodder enemies, I would literally start every fight, transform everybody into their highest power level form, uh, like Super Saiyan two or whatever, and yeah. then have Vegeta do a super big bang attack. It would kill everything on the screen in one hit. Like it was, it got that ridiculous. Like that's how broken everything was. And <laughs> wow. The ultimate boss in this game that is like the secret boss. It took me like th- two minutes to kill this guy, and he had uh, sixty million hit points, which is three times as much as Boo does at the end of the Boo saga. Sixty million hit points. And it took me two minutes to kill this guy. Why? Because like I was saying. It took like Vegeta's moves were taking two thirds of those guys' health, like twenty million. So he's doing like fifteen million a hit, like a shot with these skills. Those numbers so, are so crazy. <laughs> it was ridiculous, dude. So it's like they completely lost the plot of balance at a certain point in this game, and it just ruins the fun of the game. You know, it's yeah, like it sucks. Yeah. It's like it's cool to use Final Flash, and it destroys everything on the screen. But it's like when nothing can stand up to it, though. It's like I mean, there's no repercussions to using it. Like, it hey, man, takes just, your key, but it's... Just throw damage numbers on top of it, and it's RPG. It's, man, dude, that's exactly kind of how it feels. And, uh, like, the city, the shitty part is, like, in the Cell Saga, the balance actually came back a little bit, and it felt good. Where, yeah. like, Gohan was the most powerful character, as he should have been at that point in the story. Yeah, yeah. And Vegeta and Goku were actually kind of plateauing, like, in terms of power. They weren't, like getting that much more powerful when you were leveling up and gohan was like skyrocketing you know and it was ridiculous and he like fucking obliterates cell when he goes to super (laughs) Super saiyan 2 it's it's awesome it's such a cool moment you know like in the show when he goes super saiyan 2 yeah it felt the same way in the game but they just they failed to capture that most of the time though you know the only times it really was great was like go goku going super saiyan for the first time and yeah gohan going super saiyan 2 boo the boo saga was trash like it was not good it was was in the show it was a slog (laughs) so yeah the game's good but um i don't expect anything too deep out of this um it's the side activities are boring uh they don't let you do a lot of them honestly there's this whole r&d like crafting 
thing you can do in the game um, where you can make like a robo walker and you can make a hover car and drive the hover car and do these time, time challenges. There is literally no reason to do this. None. The ge- you don't even get rewards for doing these. Do you get like, achievements for it? Or no, you trophies? don't. No, oh. you don't. Oh, yeah. You don't even okay. get achievements. Like you get not- The only thing you get an achievement for related to this is building them for the first time. And I thought, yeah, I thought it was for... Uh... It takes nothing. Uh, well, never mind. It's, it's ridiculous, dude. So... They did a bad job with that. I think they I think they wanted to do more, but either didn't have time or what, then they just left the shit in the game. And like late in the game they introduced this whole baseball mini game where you get to like swing a baseball bat against somebody pitching to you and it's like what the like what the fuck? And there's like a side quest where you use this mechanic. I think it's like a fan service thing because that it's was such a that was in a cartoon like when Gohan so, was playing baseball, dude. And yeah, he like hits the ball into fucking space or whatever. Yeah. It's like, but it's just so. It's it's really weak. Yeah, so. a lot of that was for the fans. It was a fan service game. Yeah. So the game's all right. Um, it's definitely not going to be on like my game of the year list or anything like that. So, all right, let's move on to the news. Uh, we got a lot to talk about this week. So, uh, first piece of news. Um, this uh, this actually came out last week, a week ago, but I didn't see it until recently, uh, a couple of days ago. Is that uh, Ubisoft uh, kind of soft revealed a new Division Two expansion called Warlords of New York. Um, but I wasn't, I haven't been paying attention to this game since we stopped playing it last year. I don't know if you've kind of been in this. No, I haven't. (laughs) But the Kotaku article detailing this expansion, uh, kind of talks about the game's state of life in that this game is not in a good place. Apparently like people are not happy with it. They're not. I can see why we left it after they're not interested in it. Yeah. And I guess Ubisoft was trying to, um, keep this game or keep this expansion really close to its chest in order to kind of reinvigorate interest in the game. And it's honestly just pissing people off because they're like, they knew it was coming, but Ubisoft was like acting like they weren't doing anything for the division two. So, uh, but it's a lot of key features in that game, in the uh, expansion that Mm -hmm. a lot of people wanted for the, I don't want to say the base game, but it's features that they're, that we have to pay for, you know, like, yes. And yeah. And this is going to be like a story driven expansion too, which is something that like we wanted more of, and it's going to, it's going to, uh, evolve Aaron Keener, who is the like only interesting character in the division universe. And it's like, now you wait to do this. Like, why wasn't this guy part of the main game? You know, it's like really, it's really irritating from my perspective, but supposedly this is coming out early March. Um, they actually started selling the base game for $3 today digitally. What? So if you want to get into the division two, which I mean, it's a fun enough, uh, wrong. It's, fun, it's, it's fun enough for, for three bucks. Yeah. It's really more the time investment that you need to consider, um, with this, but yeah, for three bucks, um, the expansion is going to be bundled with the game for $40. But the thing that I really want to talk about here is not really this expansion related to Division 2, but kind of Ubisoft as a whole right now. Um, because, you know, uh, this game came out last year and, and it had a good, a decent reception. People were really happy of, but happy with it, even especially yeah. coming off Anthem. Um, you know, this game kind of picked up where Anthem failed and uh, did some good things. But like we fell off, I think a lot of people fell off with it. And it's... Uh, Interesting though, because that 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 game released, and then they had Breakpoint, um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint come out in October, and that game was a microtransaction riddled mess. It was buggy, broken. The game was so designed around the microtransactions, and people were pissed, man. Like to the like to the point where I think Ubisoft decided to kind of take a step back, and they delayed all of their early 2020 games into the back half of 2020 and they yeah. now have five triple a games that they plan on releasing by the end of this fiscal year for themselves uh the 2020 fiscal year that is which means basically like i think it's like 13 months within 13 months they're going to release five triple a games and they've not announced two of them because yeah. one's going to be an assassin creed game that we haven't heard about another one we don't know what it is but it could be a new far cry potentially um and then I believe uh, one is Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, there's another one called uh, Gods in I can't remember what it is. Um, it's some it's some like cartoony little game that though that they've been put they're pushing pretty hard. That supposedly is like Zelda like or something like that. Um, that one and then what was the other one they pushed back? I'm um, I'm forgetting what the other one is. But uh, they were pretty important games for Ubisoft. So it's uh, I don't know. They're just in a weird spot, man. Like I think I, I think. Uh, 
they're they're kind of struggling right now. Yeah, uh, they had this amazing comeback in like 2017, I think, um, with mm-hmm. like you know Rainbow Six, and then Assassin's obviously Creed Assassin's Origins. Creed Origins, yeah. and then obviously a year later they released, or not a year later, but a couple of years later they released uh, um, Division Two. Which yeah. was well, that, they did have Odyssey the next year. Assassin's uh, yeah. Creed Odyssey the yeah. next year, which was, I forgot about that. Which was people good. People were super into yeah. it. Yeah, that was really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know. Yeah, we were super excited about Ghost of Recon. A lot of people were excited that game was coming back. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it turned out to be an online open world shooter, and people were like, "This is not the Ghost of Recon I wanted." Like, right. It did have some kind of resurgence though when that um that Predator expansion came out mm. and everyone liked mm-hmm. that um but then it, it fell off again with that new expansion with the i forgot his name from uh the punisher and oh yeah uh, john bernthal john bernthal yeah john yeah. bernthal came and uh everyone was you know really hyped about that and then it just turned out to be crap it's trash yeah. um and then for me personally the reason why i, I jumped off the division two i liked everything Almost everything about the game. Um, it's just that certain things about it. I'm usually not the one to complain about a game being too hard, but it was at certain <laughs> points, bro. I swear. Like, you couldn't fight some enemies without people. And then if mm-hmm. you did, we were getting headshot. Like, as soon as we popped our Playing head, solo was bad, man. Oh, my God. And when you upgrade the the um your keeps. The world or, tiers. Yeah, yeah. The, the world tiers. It was ridiculous, man. There was almost no way to solo. Yeah, balance was off. Yeah. Oh my god, it was terrible. And then um, the loot grind was the loot grind not was good. crazy because you can get a good loot gun, like you can get a good gun, but its number, like its tier number, may not be high enough. But the the rolls that it have are like perfect, and there's no way to feed guns into that. Yeah, which, gun. To I don't make know if they hide. fixed that since. Yeah, it, it, which I'm sure they probably have. But again, though, it was it doesn't matter. Like it yeah. was at launch. People wanted that at launch. You know? Yeah, and, and I know that was a that was my big thing. Like I know a mm-hmm. lot of people were upset about the everything else. I actually was. I didn't mind the, the game being hard as long as my loot can you mm-hmm. know account for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the simple fact that I couldn't, I really had to grind, grind like. Yeah. Get new roles. I can't be if I find a role that I want a perfect role and it's not the right number, then I gotta grind again. So Dude, I find... it's like an ARPG almost, even though these games aren't ARPGs. Like it, yeah. it, it I don't think that crowd that plays shared world shooters are into that kind of loot grind. Yeah, yeah. Like ARPGs have that kind of loot grind and, and man, it is it's uh it's demoralizing. Unless you are extremely into this said game, like it's yeah. it can really drain you really quite fast. So Yeah, and that, that's what happened with me. And then on top of that, I think like, it happened to a lot of people. Yeah. Then on top of that, like we I know it, particularly for all of us, we were super hyped about the dark zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then once we got in there, they just they gutted the hell out of the dark zone and it it just wasn't fun. Like mm-hmm. they went so in over in the opposite direction, I'm not making it campy and everything of that nature that it just wasn't worth going into anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if this this patch or this download can fix this game because it had a whole bunch of issues. And I think the the loot in the dark zone, in my opinion, was the three the two issues that really mm-hmm. killed this game because yeah. I was really excited for a dark zone. Like, because if you did got playing tired of playing the main story in the old one, you just go into the dark zone squad and it felt really like tense and you mm-hmm. can die at any moment and stuff yeah. but in this dark zone we went in there there was hardly anybody in there <laughs> yeah so I, I don't know it was just it was just weird well yeah ubisoft's other problem too is i think too many of their ips are similar where like yeah <laughs> like they have a lot of shooter they make a lot of shooters dude and like realistic shooters on top yeah, of that that's the problem like they don't have any like I don't know. None of their games are like fun, like goofy fun. They don't have yeah. any games like that, you know. I guess Rabbids is the only example, but I think they don't make be, uh, very many of those games. So I think it's called Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, but that 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 they've been teasing that shit for like five years. That game is not coming out, man. <laughs> like it's just not, you know. And uh, oh yeah, they make these like realistic shooters, and then they make like Assassin's Creed, and it's like they don't. Their creativity is like kind of lacking, in my opinion. They're really relying on the Tom Clancy IP, and I think they need to like get away from it. You know? Yeah. 
Like, not not entirely, but at least do something different with it, dude. Like, stop making these fucking stale military shooters with with the Tom Clancy IP. I know that's what the IP is, but, dude, you can be creative within there, you know? The thing they need to do is stop focusing on multiplayer yeah. and open world so much. Yeah. I think with the Ghost Recon, that's what turned me off so much about that. Because mm-hmm. Ghost Recon, like, uh, Future Soldier, like, it was level-based. And yeah, yeah. the levels were designed to do different things. Like Or, or like get, Splinter Cell, right? Those are single player, right? Yeah, single player, and those those levels were designed to, you know, have player creativity within those levels yeah, instead of like an yeah. open world. I feel like open world is, I don't want to say lazy, but it's I, played out though. Like, yeah, it man, is, dude. Like, can like you give be me more original yeah, than that. Like, yeah, give me levels that you uh, that the developers like are like, oh, I want to see if the player can try to do this or figure this out or do yeah, something like yeah. that, but. It's just you like, know, like God of War, right? Like we were talking about God of War earlier. That game doesn't have an open world, but it kind of does. Like there are areas, like side areas you can go to, and there's that whole center region that you kind of explore, and there's like a bunch of side areas and stuff. And the way that game did it is th- kind of the way I want people to do it. Like I'm kind of tired of the open world. Like I, I like too. those areas because they were handmade, and yes. they had puzzles and like all sorts of different – uh, things that would kind of get in your way as a player that you'd have to overcome combat encounters, puzzles, just interesting quests and things like that. And it's like these other games, like if you just make your game open world, like, man, I don't, we're just not at a point where people can make an open world that isn't empty in certain parts. Exactly. And that sucks. Like just having a huge stretch of land where there's nothing to do is not riveting. That's not riveting gameplay. Like, you need to put something there and make it interesting. That's the only reason The Witcher 3 got away with being as big as it is because every single meter of that game is packed with shit to do. Exactly. You know? There's yeah. very few areas that have nothing in them, you know? Well, even the little shit is like, hand, it seems like it's handcrafted. Yes, like it is, yeah. They all have voice lines and everything of that nature. It's, it, yeah, it is handcrafted. They they put a lot of love into that game. You can tell. Right, right. Um, I just feel like, I was really looking forward to Ghost Recon because the Ghost Recon in particular, it was handcrafted. And on top of that, like it's, it's been a while since I played a good single player squad based shooter, mm. like where you can control where the AI yeah, yeah, is the, good. Yeah, yeah. The AI is good. You can control it within, you know, within the, like the maybe con- Mass Effect con- 2 is probably like the last one, right? Yeah. I think the last one <laughs> that had like really good AI is like or fear, Mass Effect 3 rather. Like fear too. Like oh, the yeah, AI yeah. was yeah. phenomenal in that game. I and, that game. Um, and even like Ghost Recon Future Soldier, like the levels were handcrafted and stuff like that. You control mm-hmm. different squad mates, and I, I just thought it was really cool. But they took all that out with this open world multiplayer shooter. Like, stop with that. Like, for, mm-hmm. I just think we're past the point that every game needs to be a money maker for you. Mm-hmm. Have one game, yeah. which is probably Rainbow Six Siege. You put money into that, and that could probably funnel out a whole bunch of other games as well. This is not how these companies operate, though, man. Yeah, money, 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 max money, man, max money. All right, let's move on. Uh, next story. This will. This is a short one. Uh, so uh, G, we talked about GeForce now coming out last week. Uh, we've already had our first uh, kind of big story come out of this. So apparently, uh, GeForce now allows you to play games that you own within libraries that you uh, own these games in, like Steam, uh, UPlay, Epic Game Store, and BattleNet. Well, uh, Activision Blizzard had a problem with this. So apparently, they had a specific agreement with uh, NVIDIA allowing them to let people use uh, Battle.net to stream their games, but it was only for the beta period. So let me read a quote here. So Activision Blizzard um, released a statement. Uh, quote, or actually NVIDIA released a statement, sorry. Uh, quote, uh, Activision Blizzard has been a fantastic partner during the GeForce Now beta, which we took to include the free trial period for our founders' members membership. Recognizing the misunderstanding, we remove their games from our service with hope that we can work with them to re-enable these and more in the future. So uh, apparently uh, Activision Blizzard wanted to negotiate a new commercial deal for its games with G- when GeForce Now came out of its beta period. Um, and this was according to a Bloomberg report of NVIDIA didn't want that kind of arrangement for GeForce Now. They want to be able to stre- they want their users to stream games they already own through various marketplaces. But ah, okay. the thing is, see, this is the this is going to be the problem with these streaming services. Is this is just not how it's going to work. 
because you don't just get to stream people's games for fun. You know, you don't like you don't actually own them because they're digital. So mm, in so order for you to be able to use this service to mm. interact with said game, you're going to have to make an agreement with each company that owns these games. I'm sure the same problem is going to happen with you play Epic Game Store Steam if they decide they want it to. Like if they, if they don't want GeForce Now to be able to do this with their services, they can just as easily pull the plug at any point they want. So it's uh, this story is an interesting one because it's, it's yeah you can't do nothing about it because like well, i bought it and i should be able to stream it nah son you don't own that license you're and we didn't give you a license to stream it through geforce now and yeah. we did not give geforce now a license to stream our games through their service like yep. and if if you don't do that then you're not going to be able to do it. So this is interesting. Um, this is going to be something to monitor with these, and I think all these services are going to have the same problem where they're going to have their own curated groupings of games that they're going to allow people to be able to play. Yeah. And I don't know how well this is going to work in the short term. Like I think somebody's going to have to figure this out where they become like the Netflix, where they have almost everything, you know. But then you're going to cre- have a situation. The same thing's going to happen. I think this is what I think is going to happen. The same thing's going to happen that's happening in TV right now where Netflix had everything because they were the only streaming provider. And then everybody else started making their own streaming platforms. And you have CBS All Access. And now you have Disney Plus, And you, know, you have all these other companies, these small companies making their own streaming platform. I think the same shit's going to happen in games where I think Activision Blizzard's going to have their streaming platform and EA is going to have their streaming platform and Ubisoft's going to have their streaming platform. And I hate that shit. So I hope I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like this story, though, shows me that we're going to head to the same exact fucking place with this stuff because these companies just cannot... Like, they want to get as much revenue as they can out of the shit they make, you know? Like, they, they can't... They're not just going to let you use it for fun, you know? Exactly. So, all right. You got any thoughts on any other thoughts on that? No, I, I think this goes back and tie it back into our, uh, which we already touched on, our digital conversation. Right, right. Down, um, downside to digital. Yeah, we don't, we don't own these games, and this is why you should buy physical. And this is why I think, honestly, especially with games in particular, the, the streaming thing is never going to take off. Like, it's going to be so much infighting. Um, it's already happening. Yeah, because it's, it's going to kill this. It's, instead of having individual deals with networks, we have to work with individual companies and things of that nature. And you're not going to get every game you want. You're not going to get every game you want to play and things of that nature. I think the only game service that's going to do it right is probably the Xbox Live Game Pass thing. Right. Um. So I'm very interested in seeing what 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 happens with this with this streaming industry that's going to take off or not take off in the in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on. This is uh, probably the biggest story of the week. Uh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg released an article uh, about the PS4 talking about, so it's titled, let's see, uh, Sony is struggling with PlayStation 5 price due to costly parts. So this um, was a report by them uh, this week that was really interesting, uh, kind of detailed the cost of the units. So I'm going to quote a couple pieces here. So, quote, the PlayStation 4, released in 2013 at a retail price of $399, was estimated by IHS Market to cost $381 to manufacture. With the $450 unit cost and a similar gross margin, the PlayStation 5's retail price would have to be at least $470. That would be a hard sell to consumers, considering Sony's most expensive machine now is the $399 PS4 Pro and is often discounted according to marquee uh, capital analyst Damien Dong, uh, end quote. Um, there's other stuff here, though, that is actually important. Uh, let's see. There was something about, so they want to gradually, uh, here we go. Uh, I, I'll quote again. Uh, Sony executives are voicing patience about the next console's pricing as they anticipate the transition to be a gradual one said people familiar with its day-to-day operations. Many of the games launched for the PlayStation 5 will also be available to play on the predecessor machine, so revenue from software and related network services is expected to keep the business performance intact. End quote. So I want to talk about both of these things separately. Uh, They're both very important, but let's talk about the cost of the unit first. So $450 cost of the unit is insanely high. Um... 
because that doesn't even necessarily take into account shipping costs, uh, costs with the consumers that or the retailers that they plan on selling this through that they have to get their own cut or whatever of each unit sold. So, I mean, I think a $500 price point for this is bare minimum. Um, yeah, yeah. And that that's kind of where I've been ballparking this the whole time. But I could see higher. It's just we've been seeing all these rumors running around that Sony's kind of hedging their bets because they're waiting on Xbox to reveal their price, and Sony wants to wait to, to see that before they reveal their own. And it's it, – It sounds like to me, like when I first initially read the article and things of that nature, mm-hmm. it sounds like they're scared of Xbox. Like I, I don't, think so too. And they're scared of like maybe what Nintendo has up their sleeve because we don't know what Nintendo has. Right. Um. And people, people are already saying like, "Oh, PlayStation won the next console generation." It's like we don't mm-hmm. like we need to. The simple fact that PlayStation is really scared, we need to take account of that. Like Xbox may have some; they may know some insider information about Xbox that we don't even know about. You know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then I also read an article that said, you know, PlayStation isn't really concerned about Xbox; they're more concerned about Nintendo as far as exclusivities. Like this goes beyond hardware. They're fighting like the long game as far as like exclusivities and things of that yeah. nature. And I think it was because of that last article uh, last week that we read about the switches selling 50 million and mm-hmm. then Mario Kart selling 20 million or some absurd right. number or something <laughs> like that. And like these are their first art party IPs. And I think PlayStation is really looking at that and like this is our true competitor. We need to compete with them. Um, I just think it's weird that they're struggling for a price point i think they can set this mantra for this if they if they come out and say 450 yeah xbox may come out and say 400 but that that would probably be losing money for them at this well, point. well th- there's a lot of problems here if the unit really costs 450 and in this article they said they're paying several times more for cooling than they have in the past which makes sense given the the power of the unit the more powerful these PC parts, the better the cooling needs to be. Um, it's just the way these things are at this point. And cooling is so important for a device like this for it to maintain its uh, quality over the years. So it's just, I think for me, like 450 as a unit cost, I don't like there's, the, the article does say that there's kind of an internal struggle with Sony between uh, their leadership deciding between eating the cost of the console and, and selling it at a loss in order to get it out there and proliferate it and make their money on software, which yeah. is what they did with the PlayStation 3 um, for a while. And even though that thing cost $600, they were still losing money on it. Um, and Or instead of doing that, selling it higher so they can actually make money on each unit but maybe impacting their demand. That's kind of the internal struggle happening at Sony right now, according to this article. And that makes sense. Because, I mean, it's kind of an important decision for them to make. Like, if they release this console at 500 that might even be a loss, you know, all given all the things I mentioned. Yeah. You know, import, yeah. whatever import taxes there are, you know, shipping costs, r- retailer uh, cuts and all that stuff. Like, you take all that into account, they might still be losing money at 500 you know? Yeah, they, so, may, they may go this, you know, that Sony Direct route where they start selling directly to people instead of going which through. Which, they're definitely going to do that, but it's just not, I don't think they're going to sell very many that way. You yeah, know? you're right, you're like, right. Like, it's just people are used to the tr- traditional retailers, and honestly, the Sony's not going to be able to ship fast enough to fulfill demand. And, so, and then, too, we also have to take account that Sony PlayStation was in a very different headspace in uh, PS3. Yeah, uh, they had the hardware to back up their sales. Mm-hmm. They had some like Sony computers, you know, Sony audio systems and everything of that nature. They had that stuff to back up their sales, so they can they can take a loss when they were selling the PlayStation at six hundred dollars, not or six to seven hundred dollars. But now they can't do that. They have to be more strategic in how they well. They Sony's move. a very different company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Back then, PlayStation was not their main business. Exactly. Uh, fortunately, now it is their main business, and they can't. Necess- I don't think they can afford to take a huge cut, like loss, on this thing. Exactly. Un- unlike Microsoft, because this is the thing. I think you're right. I think them releasing the releasing the price is irrelevant when they do it because. I think no matter what, I think Microsoft is going to undercut them. Like I don't, I don't think I don't care what uh, Sony Microsoft tries. can afford it, right? Because Microsoft is a company that is multifunctional. They sell so many different products. Xbox is like a 
uh, drop in the bucket for Microsoft. Like, exactly. It's like it's like a like a fun little toy they make. You know, it's like it's nothing compared to what they're making with Windows and the Surface Pros and all the other shit they do. You know, so this it, it's just not. This is a fight Sony's not going to win in that way. Pricing, they're going to have to win on features and and power and. The fact that they're hedging so much on this is I'm I'm kind of getting concerned that they don't they don't think they have the guns to compete pound for pound with Microsoft on that front, and man, if they don't, then they're in trouble. Like I I could see them really losing honestly, losing honestly, some headway. We're on the same we're on the same boat, but like going in different directions. I think they're more scared of Nintendo. I think they see Nintendo's exclusivities as their main competitor. <sighs> Man, why would they though? I I don't think so. I I, I, I read the article saying that that's what they they're afraid of, and I once I sat back and thought about it, I'm like, man, that actually makes a lot of sense. I feel like yeah. they feel like the Switch is really going to move in on, on their territory as far as exclusivities, and they really need this push that mantra. I feel like PlayStation fans will buy mm-hmm. the PlayStation Four or Five rather without any. I th- I feel like. Xbox has broken their reputation so bad during the Xbox One that yes, the Xbox One series or Series X or whatever the freak is called. <laughs> it's um, a terrible name. Uh, I feel like they're still going to push units, but it's not going to be as much units, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the PlayStation Five will sell a lot of units just off the the success name. of the PlayStation right. Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but to keep up those lifetime sales, they're going to have to make exclusives. They're going to have to get people to stay in that ecosystem. So let's jump to the second point that I mentioned. The second quote that I read is that they don't plan on having PlayStation five exclusives exclusively on PS five. Potentially it says, so this is the, this is the main quote here. Many of the games launched for the PlayStation five will also be available to play on the predecessor machine. So, to me, that doesn't say that every game is going to be like that, but many of their games. So most of the games we see at launch could potentially be on PS4, which is going to hold them back somewhat in terms of their design and whatnot. They're not, not going to take full advantage of the PS5. Yeah. And this is funny, though, because this is the same thing that Xbox said a few weeks ago, and everybody was jumping down Microsoft's throat. Yeah, Like, yeah, exactly. are you fucking kidding me? You're not going to be able to win the console generation without exclusives? Well, apparently Sony thinks the same thing. So, like, what the fuck? Nobody's jumping down Sony's throat for this. It's just it's that ridiculous double standard has continued. But whatever, I digress. Um, there's other important things here, though, to note in this article. So it does say... Uh, quote, the ongoing growing coronavirus outbreak has had no impact so far on preparations for PlayStation 5 production. Okay. Um, and the company has yet, deci- yet to decide how many PlayStation 5 units it will make in the first year. Another thing, quote, separately, Sony plans to release a new version of the PlayStation VR virtual reality headset tenderly scheduled after the PlayStation Live goes on sale. Not uh, unexpected. Um but uh, just interesting to note. Um, and then another thing here, uh, quote, Sony has already canceled some previously planned features for a new mirrorless camera due this year, owing to the constrained DRAM supply, uh, which is interesting because the PSVR uses the, the camera in order to function. And uh, the fact that they, they're, are they just going to continue using the current camera? Because I'm, it, it I mean, that's an old, old device. So that's an interesting thing to technologically constrain yourself that way, potentially. Um, but maybe it doesn't use a camera at all. That's also possible. It could use like gyro or something Yeah, yeah. Um, for that. Um, there was one other piece in here that was interesting. Um, uh, oh, yeah. The, the other thing is um, this is rela- this related to the reveal. So we've been kind of waiting for the reveal event. And um it's just it seems imminent, but it just continues to not be announced. And I, I, I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't know if they're I, waiting they're, for like they're like they seem like they're in panic mode. That like like I mean that's kind of my assumption right now. It's I like, just I think you're right. I think it's a combination of everything. That they, I think this division mm-hmm. is uh not used to being the leader of the whole company like they're like you said the they're North, the helm North, Ameri- North America yeah they're yeah. the helm of everything now that's like, happened recently last yeah, couple of years exactly and now they're trying they don't want to mess it up like right. they have to show their investors and their other colleagues that we can do this so I think they're honestly I don't blame them for taking this this caution to it I mean it could look like they're 
panicking, but, panicking yeah. but I, I just think they're being very cautious. And I think, uh, which I'm actually proud of because I do not want another PS3 debacle. I don't want that. And I feel like the PS3 show their arrogance. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the PS3. I think they're very cognizant of that. Yeah, yeah. This article indicates that for sure. They're very cognizant that they need to step carefully. But yeah. I don't think they're going to car- I don't think they're going to charge 600 for the for the console, but I don't know, there might be people in there in Sony arguing for that right now. I I, I don't What they should do is maybe make a premium version of the console that's $600. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that in my opinion can push sales and things of that nature. What then, would be premium about it though? Are people really going to buy a console like maybe the the normal unit has like one terabyte of SSD space, and then the Pro one has like two terabytes? Yeah, I are really this, people going to really spend a hundred dollars for a terabyte? Like, I heard from a leak that this console is only supposed to have five hundred gigs. Yeah, it's an SSD. It makes sense. It oh, costs okay. more money than a than a regular hard drive. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Okay. For the same amount of data, I mean, a terabyte hard drive or terabyte SSD right now costs. For consumers, like ninety to one hundred bucks. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm I mean, sure for Sony, it's a lot less than that. But you know, still. Yeah. So they can charge like that. Will be the premium version. I'm assuming. Like yeah. you get that. I guess that's true. I and maybe true. like you get a year of like PS Plus, PS Plus, or something like that. Yeah. They should do that anyways with the console, but they're not gonna do. They're that. not gonna do that. You're probably gonna get that's one too, free month. That's too much money on the table. <laughs> yeah, you're probably gonna get one free month yeah, or whatever. That's too much money on the table. I don't know. I just think this this article will reveal a lot of interesting information because, dude, there's so many rumors flying right now about spec leaks and all this shit, and it's just it's getting out of control. Like, I we just we need to know something at this point. Like, well, well not only that, we're gonna get to it later, but the industry as a whole is like coming at a stalemate. Like, we need to start yeah. making moves again. Well, because this is the the thing about the coronavirus is actually really important because we were speculating last week about it being delayed potentially, and like they cannot afford to delay this console. It would be catastrophic for them, it, for either party, Microsoft or Sony, to delay their consoles by three or four months because the amount of shit that that would impact all these companies that have launch games planned that are planning on releasing the next Assassin's Creed or whatever the hell in in November. What do you do? Like you have yeah, to release, you have to wait. Yeah, you either have to wait or you have to release just the PS4 version in November. It's like, man, dude, you know. So it, it, there's so much riding on the fact that these games are or these consoles are going to release in the fall. You know, I do want to touch on one thing about that backwards mm-hmm. compatibility thing where they're releasing games with both consoles. I think I'm tired of people giving them shit, both companies shit for this. Mm-hmm. Um, whether they are or not, I'm, I'm not sure, but. This was the first time, in my opinion, that we're having such a smooth transition over to they want to make the transition as smooth as possible for the consumers, which yes. we don't get it right. Yeah. I, I mean, for money purposes, yeah, they're, they're trying to make it smooth for us. But that's the benefit for you. You are the consumer that they're doing this for. Um, I was reading an article or something is talking about how important backwards compatibility is. And we, honestly, it is very important. I want yes. to be able to play old games. I will that that is going to make or break my decision to buy the console on day 1. Exactly. And um the simple fact that you know both consoles are like, well, you know, you can play both games. They're trying to make it as smooth as possible for every consumer down to the mm-hmm. to the to the to the cheapest person or the p- person that even can't afford it to to buy consoles and get more gamers into it. And I think that's mm-hmm. it's a win for all of us as as a whole as a consumer of the video games and i think people should stop bitching i don't even need to cuss but i think people should stop bitching about it like this is a legitimate thing that we've been asking for and fighting for now that we got it you guys are bitching about it like, oh I, 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 if i'm playing for a new console i, I want a new console i want new games like shut yeah, up yeah. like shut up like take stop me- being an acolyte okay Ex- exactly like, like, whatever dude like it's good for everybody I also can't get over the fact that you excused yourself for cussing on a show where we say the F word yeah, literally right. every five. I was thinking about Dennison's like, every, podcast. Like, I, I was like, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dennison's rubbing off on you, man. Yeah, I know, You're going right? to start saying freak and stuff. You know? yeah, I did say it already. What the freak? Yeah. But um, I just, I, I, I just, it's, it's just mind-blowing the comments I'm reading. And mm. I know these are probably a small vocal minority of people 
There's uh, a lot of people that still feel this way, though. Yeah, I, just, I don't yeah. get it. Like, what's what's so bad about them being consumer I friendly? Think, like, I think people just, feel like if they don't, if they uh, if they do this, they're going to be holding the company back, or they're going to be holding the game. The game. They're going to hold the game okay, back. Okay, so what, dude? Like, but it, I feel like they don't understand how PC gaming works. PC yes, gaming that's, is that's literally exactly this. What I was about to say. It, yeah. Um, like they have different tiers. They literally have a sliding scale they have to make it, games on exactly, constantly yeah, that exactly. changes every year. Like. It, it this isn't a new thing like developers figured this out 25 fucking years ago you know exactly it's like they can make games with graphic sliders it's a thing like yeah. it's not that hard you know console game uh, developers will be able to figure it out i think you yeah. know and it's, i just don't have i don't have a uh, any fear that this is going to mess up my gaming experience oh my god like they did this with to me uh this generation they did it with destiny and they mm. did it with Assassin's Creed Black Flag mm. and some other games, too, where mm. they came out on Xbox 360, PS3, and it also came out on Xbox One and uh, PS4. And you know what? Those caused a lot of people to actually buy those games because they saw how not crappy it was, but how much better it is than the other they consoles. They made the game for the new console and then ported it down, exactly. which means they had to downgrade things on the old version on the old consoles, which is the same thing that's going to happen here. Exactly. And it still drove people to get the new games and things of nature. Only thing that happened with these consoles, they didn't have backwards compatibility up upon first launch. Mm -hmm. They learned their lesson now, and now they are going to have backwards compatibility. And they're going to have backwards compatibility all the way up to the last generation. And then the Xbox, if you want to go all the way back to the fucking first generation, is going to be there. So I don't see only people that didn't really learn their lesson is Nintendo. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't really learn their lesson with backwards compatibility. And it's well, going to be. That's not really true. They were they were pretty good about it up until recently. Because dude, all their handhelds were backwards compatible. Yeah. Oh yeah. For but years. We're, but we're not going to get that. Like. Because even even remember the Wii was back compatible with GameCube. It had GameCube controller ports and memory card ports, and then even the Wii U was compatible with Wii. Yeah, but I'm just saying though, like. But now the switch is completely like cut off. Exactly. Back and bat, which exactly. I mean, I understand though. And 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 they don't have like a virtual market for people to buy yeah, yeah. GameCube games. Which is dumb. Yeah. So. I mean, it's like they they went backwards and, and they went in the total opposite directions. Like they're just now reaching the seventh gen or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. That's just my little rant about that i'm sorry yeah i'm just chomping at the bit dude i need them to announce this fucking event i need to know about this damn thing already you know i'm ready we're all ready i think sales show that we're ready right we're ready come on sony just shit or get off the pot already let's go all right let's move on uh next story uh this is a this is a nice little story right here so uh this is gonna make montreal happy so uh sonic the hedgehog came out this past weekend and uh man it's doing all right it's uh, done a uh, hundred million global opening weekend. Hundred million for this for this movie uh, based on a video game character. I'm really that's uh, that's that's actually really encouraging. I guess the redesign did its trick. I think it got people interested. Actually, that whole controversy it probably helped this movie more than anything. Um, and uh, you've seen the movie, right? Yes. So, uh, what did you think of it? Uh, this movie was made with a lot of love. Yeah. Uh it's a you no know, it's a silly story or whatever, but I mean what cartoon movie is or cartoon well, yeah, it's it's a movie made for children, but also somehow they made it for Sonic fans as well. And I don't mind it at all. I get all the references in the movie. Uh there are certain things that happen, like the way he fights Dr. Robotnik at the end. It seems like a uh he's like constantly hitting the ship and it's like it's like a callback to the earlier Boss battles with Doctor Robotnik, and this mm -hmm. is really cool. He calls him Eggman inside of the, in the in the thing because of his robots and yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and and then the post credit scenes. I don't want to give that away. So that was really cool. And one of the Sonic memes showed up too in the movie, didn't it? I heard, I heard yeah that. yeah and then he yeah. says gotta go fast and everything like that so <laughs> i mean it's That's he wakes up it's like gotta go fast because yeah. something happens in the movie where he has to he wakes up like that um mm, yeah and the movie was just it's just a fun movie like it didn't take itself too seriously but it also didn't go super silly it was just okay it's just a fun movie to watch like you know if you want to watch it i gotta ask though i gotta ask 
are are you and others giving this game this movie a boost because video game movies suck and you just want one to be good? Like it, no, like, do you, no. Do you, I went do you into this. Like, do you feel like I people are being this, honest about how good this is? I went into this movie. I didn't I actually didn't want to see this movie. I didn't buy my ticket for this movie. Okay. Um, actually, I did. I'm sorry. I did buy my ticket, but my friend you really can fucking liar. But my friend really I'll convinced dare you. <laughs> my friend really convinced because he bought the ticket. and I paid him back later, okay. but. uh Oh, what really... a good friend you are. <laughs> I don't think Jet's been paid back for all the Star Wars <laughs> tickets he bought for everybody. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. He was. He was. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm calling people out when I shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I went to go see the movie, and my fr- this was my friend's second time seeing the movie with us. And um, I went in there, like, totally fucking cynical. Like, I'm just like, oh, my God, this movie's about to be fucking terrible. Like, even though the redesign is really good, like this movie's about to be terrible. Mm-hmm. But no, it you know the Sonic character, it captured the Sonic character right. spirit very well. It captured all the little quips and all the Okay. Everything. Um Do you think people who don't like Sonic or don't don't even know what Sonic is would like this? Yes. What about uh, people who don't like Sonic? Don't go see it. I mean <laughs> I, that was a dumb question. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, don't go see it. I wanted to tell you. I'm not going to go. I'm going to say, oh, I saw it. even non Sonic fans could see this. No, don't go see it. Like, it's a Sonic movie, but like, my friend, he had his daughter there. She really does. She knows who Sonic is, but it's like, like a super Sonic fan, mm-hmm. and she loved the movie. It was, it was really cool. So, yeah. I mean, if you're just looking for a fun family family movie, take with the kids. Go see Sonic. Like, it's a really cool movie. And it's not because video game movies always suck. It's because this was like a genuine, like, cool... What was uh, one movie that came out I can compare it to or whatever? Uh, it was like a Pikachu Pet Detective. It was almost oh, okay. to the level of that movie. How, pet Detective. <laughs> or Pet Detective shit. Uh, Pikachu, Detective Pikachu. Detective Pikachu. <laughs> Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Pikachu Pet Detective. But yeah, it was almost to the level of that movie, right? Like, where mm-hmm. the story was just... It was there. It was a good story. But it was so many call-outs to, the, like, the Pokemon series and things mm-hmm. of that nature that it, it worked for the movie. It was a fun kid movie to go see. Um, and I feel like this movie uh, wasn't... All, wasn't Story-wise, wasn't as deep or... Whatever, but it's it was fucking Sonic, dude. Like, yeah, how deep it, is it gonna be? Yeah, like, it was, it, uh, it I'm was, sure the next move in he'll, movie he'll go Super Saiyan Sonic. So <laughs> it's Super maybe, Sonic. Maybe they'll maybe they'll introduce Shadow too. I wait. I hope, but uh, I think this was following. If like, they introduce the, Shadow, I'm in. I'll see the next movie. I think this was following the not the Sonic Adventure storyline, but the Sonic Three, Sonic Three and Knuckles yeah. storyline. Okay, okay. Uh, so the retro Sonic storyline, but um, yeah, I think it's just really fucking cool. Uh, I'm going to say one thing about this. Um, I'm seeing a lot of, there's a lot of obviously like hate for this movie as well. Like people saying, oh, well, it's garbage or it's not that as good. It's not as good as people are saying it are. But there's a specific group of people I want to call out here. Those of you out there who are saying this movie would have been better with the old design, go oh. away. Don't be that fucking guy, okay? Because nobody thinks that, objectively thinks that is like a go, like objectively true. So you remember what you said about somebody earlier when I always have just a adverse was would you say adverse opinion or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I think that's what it is. People some people just want to have a they different They just got to be the contrarian, man. Yeah, they just yeah, have to be, man. Like, I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the old design and no. It's, it's no, not good at no, all. No. No. This movie wouldn't have been better with that. No. I don't even want I almost want to see the cut though with that design in the movie. Yeah. I kind of almost want to see it. I That's hope they funny. put it in the director's cut. They should. They should. Yeah, they they can at least put that whole idea to bed, you know. But yeah, because his design made a way better difference in the movie. He it's, looks like Sonic. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he looks like Sonic. It's so cool, and I think. Yeah. I don't know, man. So, it's, yeah, it's a cool story. Good for Sonic. Good for. Oh yeah, uh, and another fan base, Birds of Prey fans. Shut up. Oh yeah, what is going on with that? I, I they're can't. attacking this movie. Under, what is wrong with everybody? <laughs> what is wrong with us? Can we just let good things be good things? Okay. And Birds of Prey was a good movie, like, and fuck, I understand it didn't do. Alone, all I understand, fucking, dude. All these assholes coming out too, saying, "Oh my god, the costume designs for Birds of Prey. Oh my god, these women look so unsexy." It's like, dude. 
Shut just up. shut. Nobody fucking cares. Like, right. see, that's why the yeah, sales. Yeah, because you have an objective opinion on what beauty looks like. Like, yeah, and, shut. And they're up. blaming. And, and people are purposely not seeing birds of prey just be assholes and you know misogynistic just the assholes yeah. and shit like that. But like, birds of prey was a, a, a genuinely a good movie. Mm-hmm. I saw it this past weekend. Um, so Man, you've seen a lot of movies. Man, is this a movie podcast? Nah, man, nah. it's turning into a movie podcast. I'm sorry. But yeah, it, it was a good movie and. Uh, but I'm seeing that fan base attack Sonic because the it did. viewers take. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, uh, I guess Sonic did way better than the Birds of Prey on its opening weekend. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just enjoy both movies. I saw both of them and I enjoy both. Yeah. So. All right. Next story. Uh, this one is uh, close to you, I suppose. So, uh, according to site RPGsite.net, uh, the city of Final Fantasy NT is dead. There will be no more updates for the arcade or PS4, and there are no more plans for a Dissidia sequel. I'm going to give you the stage, sir. What 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 do you feel about this situation? Uh, um, Honestly, I, I really don't have too many opinions on this game, per se. Uh, the reason I brought this article up is because this is a, this is a common theme with video games in general. So, back on this idea for a minute. Um, I don't care um, because I played the game. <laughs> no, I was a Dissidia fan, yeah, 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 and yeah. I played this game. And honestly, they reap what they sow. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not trying to be like mean or towards the developers or anything. They they really tried something different with it. Um, but the game wasn't balanced. The game, the city was always a one v one arena RPG, and they did it. They yeah, that sounds weird, but it, that's what it was. It always looked cool. Yeah, it did look. It was cool, and you had a, it was a built in RPG mechanic within that arena style thing with your characters. So you can level up characters and get more abilities and things of that nature, and do more mm-hmm. damage and stuff like that. Right. They should have kept it that style. The problem with the city was it was three v three. It wasn't an RPG. It was more like an arena style, but with the, with the city of magic on it. So what it was almost like a three v three Naruto Ninja Storm Final Fantasy mix type deal. So it was multiplayer. Like you had to, yeah, you it needed was, six people it, to play. And it, it was just fucking chaos. It it, it, it wasn't fun to play. There a was no of, like teamwork or synergy. Or no, anything like it that. wasn't. And there was overpowered characters. The balancing was shit. Yeah. And so if yeah. you get a character with a really good AOE move, then we just clear out the entire your team can clear out the entire other team. So they didn't really balance it. So the reason I bring all that up is because um, now this game's about to be dead, or it is dead, and now people have this wild idea that oh, I wish players would give this game a chance because oh, it's such a good game, and I'm it's oh man, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Everyone said the same uh, thing when this game came out. Yeah. This isn't like. <sighs> It isn't like one of those gym games that people like gyms, diamonds in the rough that no one gave a chance. It's not right. that. Like everyone, it's not like Last Remnant, man. Exactly right. <laughs> everyone gave this game a chance. Like everyone did when this game came out, right. and no one played it. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone played it, and everyone was like, "Yeah, this game's not good." <laughs> they left it alone. So I'm tired of this whole like spiel of people like, "Oh." I just wish people get because they did this shit with Sonic 06. People are like, oh, you know, Sonic 06 was actually an okay game, or Sonic Unleashed. Sonic Unleashed was actually an okay game. I didn't, I didn't mind the werewolf levels. Yes, you did. Everyone mind the werewolf All levels. These Sonic games, man. Like oh, man. everyone minded the werewolf levels. I hated the werewolf levels. Everyone loved the Sonic levels, but we hated the werewolf style. Just give us a pure Sonic game, and it was like, oh, yeah, I just. I don't understand why the fans hated this. Uh, kind of like Sonic Adventure uh, Battle 2, where you did like the Eggman stages and the Tail stages, and you're just like, God fucking. And you know what? That's on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Yeah. No one talks about how bad those stages were. <laughs> we always talk about how the Sonic good or Shadow stages. Sonic or Shadow. Yeah. Even but it's like a third of the game. Like yeah, exactly. you, the other third, there's like two other thirds. And <laughs> one of them, one of those thirds is okay. Like the searching stuff. Yeah, with the Knuckles searching stuff was good. Whatever the hell that that chick's name was and then yeah the Eggman slash tail stages that are fucking well, trash fucking terrible like, like, but no one talks about that they're right horrible. we always talk about how good the, the game, sonic the sonic was, stages yeah. were and that's 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 good but let's be realistic about it and i feel like and yeah. final fantasy fans do this shit like this is a particularly final fantasy mm-hmm. theme where they just like oh 
fun. We've we've heard it more <laughs> often than anyone, man. Like, yeah, we know better than anybody. <laughs> These Final Fantasy fans. <laughs> These motherfuckers coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> oh, Final Fantasy 15, a good game. Here we go. Final Fantasy 15 is getting a side swipe for the episode, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, yeah, like, uh... Like it was, it's it's the opposite though. With Final Fantasy Thirteen, like everyone shitted on that game. Now, I played that game is actually not that bad. <laughs> it's fucking yeah, it's fucking so, it's, it's fine. So yeah, this is the thing with Final Fantasy. It's and, like a seven, you know. It's fucking it's fucking fine, you know. But no, it's a horror. It's the worst game ever made. Square Square should have been burned off the face of the planet for releasing that linear garbage, you know. But okay, Final Fantasy Ten was linear too. Everybody. And then, like, with this game, right? No one played this game. No one. This game came out. It instantly dropped to $14. I don't remember this shit. They got a t- they've done a terrible job with the city over the years <laughs> because I feel like it comes out and no one fucking knows. I have no idea when these games have come out. When did the one before this one come out? Because wasn't it a fucking, like, Vita game? It, yeah, it was a PSP game. Or PS, it was PSP. The second yeah, one was yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the flying fuck has been going on here? Yeah, like, I mean, just cross reference. Oh my quick. god, Square, could you fuck this up anymore? Like, it's just like it seems like they don't want these games to succeed. Like, why do they even bother? You know, like who even makes this shit? Who makes Dissidia? Square does. They do. Yeah, Square yeah. proper. What are they? What are they doing? Yeah, it's their. It's their game. It's oh. their game. They're. They're. Uh, God, people. they're hor- They're so bad sometimes. Like, come on, guys. I think it's the city of one and then the city of two. Right. Uh, it actually was like a, a project from the Nomura. So. Okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, Word. oh, so for this game though, Team Ninja did it. Oh. Wait, Square really? didn't do it. Yeah, Square didn't do this game. Team Ninja what did it. What the fuck? When did they do that? <laughs> when did this come out? This came out, uh, let me check. Like 2015, 2016? Yeah, 2015. Oh, uh, okay. So this was pre Actually, it was an arcade. It was pre neo It was an arcade in Japan in 2015. Then okay. they released it uh, worldwide in 2018. Wait, three years? What the? What? <laughs> what? What time period do they think we live in? Like, what? <laughs> God, man, I don't, whatever. Fucking square, man. Oh, I don't know. All right, you got anything else to say about this? Uh, no, yeah, so the last game that was made was uh, Dissidia. Oh, oh, uh, fucking complicated names. Dissidia 012. Right, that was the second one. Yeah, that was the second one. That was on the PSP. Okay, it was on PSP. All right. Yeah, so um, that was the last one made, and then they put it out on arcade and they saw the traction that was getting in the States just slide by, you know, trends and everything like that. And people are like, Oh man, I want this game over here. So they released it and we discovered that it was shit. So we didn't play it. And uh, now everyone's raving that this was actually a good game when it wasn't. So let's be honest with ourselves guys. Yeah. Final fantasy fans, be honest with yourselves for once. You know what? I'm going to say the same thing to dragon quest fans. No, I, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to get canceled. That's cancel culture. Be honest no, with no, yourself. No, no, no. I know. It's a, <laughs> dude, that's a hornet's nest. I don't know if I should be kicking that. Man. Oh, man. That fan base man. fucking fired our I podcast. Hope nobody, I hope nobody. <laughs> it Actually, fight. you know what, guys? Come at us. Come at us, you fuckers. Come get us. Cancel us. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that fan base. Oh. Uh, Takes the same. Track. I just I I heard a plot synopsis of the new Dragon Quest, like Dragon Quest Eleven. It sounds like fucking garbage. Like it's bro, like they make you play the game like three times. It's bro, just the, the game is trash. I mean, the gameplay is stale. It's that same. Oh, of course it is. It's oh. like Pokemon. <laughs> yes. You want to talk about stale, man? Uh oh. Uh oh. Now, you, now right, you, yeah, 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 yeah. we're getting way off topic. All right, let's keep going here. All right, last story, guys. Uh, now, MPD. Now you really tried to get canceled. <laughs> MPD numbers for January came up. <laughs> <laughs> We've hit the trifecta: Dragon Quest fans, Final Fantasy fans, and Pokemon fans. Come at us, boys! I'm ready. Oh man. Okay. All right. MPD numbers for January came out. Uh, it is uh, continuing. The downward trend has continued. Uh, so total video game sales uh, were down from 918 million in 2019 to 678 million in 2020, uh, and minus 26 percent change. That is a lot. 
Uh, video game hardware sales were down from 199 million last year to 129 million this year. 35 negative 35 percent change. Uh, and then video PC and video game software sales. This includes digital formats. Uh, uh, 451 million sales in 2019, down to 311 million sales Ooh, wow. in 2020, uh, minus 31 percent. And then accessories, 268 million uh, in 2019, uh, down to 238 million in 2020, minus 11 percent. Man, video game accessories, man, dude, they're doing that well. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, they're Nintendo. selling more than the damn hardware. <laughs> Lucky Nintendo, man. That's crazy, dude. That's a lot. Uh, so tw- top 20 games. Uh, for the month of January. Uh, this list is not going to be surprising. Uh, so Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is number one. Uh, number two is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 19. Number three, Madden NFL 20. Number four, Jedi uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Number five, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number six, <laughs> oh NBA 2K20. Number seven, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number eight, Mario Kart 8. Number nine, Ring Ring Fit Adventure. I actually might get that game, Loki. Um, can I say too the last two I said Mario Kart Eight, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate doesn't include digital sales. What? <laughs> it's so wild to me. It's unbelievable, dude. Uh, number ten, Red Dead Redemption Two. Number eleven, Minecraft. Number twelve, Pokemon Sword. Number thirteen, Luigi's Mansion Three. Both of those don't include digital. Uh, number fourteen, Star Wars Battlefront Two, twenty seventeen. Uh, number 15, Zelda Bre- Breath of the Wild. Also, no digital sales for that. Number 16, Need for Speed Heat continues to be on these lists. It's a game selling, man. I, I, and you know I, what? There was a story we didn't read. Uh, they're g- taking away development of these, this series from the company that made it, Ghost Games, and giving it to Criterion again. <laughs> So what? you make a Need for Speed game that's selling like crazy, and you know what? <laughs> Fuck your studio. You're not making any more Need for Speed games. Way to go, EA. I mean, I don't even know if this game's good, but uh, it's been selling really consistently since it came out in November. So I've heard good things about this game. So. Yeah, I actually want to try it um, personally because I love Need for Speed, but... Uh, we'll see if I can muster the courage to dive in there. Uh, number 17, FIFA 20. Number 18, Just Dance 2020. Number 19, Mortal Kombat 11. Number 20, Pokemon Shield getting in such injustice. Eight spots below Pokemon Sword. This is some garbage. I guess people like Swords more than Shield. Of course so they, they do. Yeah. Who, 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 seriously, who, what kid grows up in a world where they want to be the guy holding a shield? Uh, have you watched the anime Rise of the Shield Hero? <laughs> nobody, Montreal. The answer to that question is fucking nobody. Nobody <laughs> thinks the guy wearing a shield is cool. Not a single human. Like, it's just, yeah. And clearly it's meted out in uh, Pokemon Pokemon Sword and Shield sales. So. Well, you know, it's funny. So this is actually proving my point earlier about how Sony is really scared of Nintendo. All these first-party games are still on this list without digital sales. Like, that's their first-party exclusives. Zero Sony exclusives on here. Exactly. Which, I mean, that's pretty typical, actually, except for the months they release, generally. So, But Mario Kart 8 was released, like, three Dude, years. Dude, Smash Bros. Ultimate. And Mario Kart, yeah, Mario Kart 8. <laughs> this is a game that was released on the Wii U. Yes. The Wii U that got ported to Switch. Like, what are we doing? How is this game selling so many fucking copies? Hey, let's, let's, go, I can't, let's go to I the can't. 10 top games over the last 12 months. What yeah. the Liquid, flying Liquid, fuck, Liquid's dude. on that list. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. NBA 2K20, Madden, NFL 20, Borderlands 3, yeah. Mortal Kombat 11, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Season 2, Division 2, Smash Bros, Smash Bros, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Mario Kart 8. That didn't include digital sales. Can I go to the top 10 Xbox? Is Mario Kart 8 on here too? What about the PlayStation <laughs> ones? Is Mario Kart 8 somehow on this list? Like, fucking give me a break, dude. Like, it's I'm just... actually glad to see that DBZ is on top, man. man. That shows the diversity of the Xbox community, Dude, man. you look at the top Top 10 Switch games, though, they're all over the January top sellers. Like, it's, it's, it's insane. Like, half the list is Switch games. It's nuts. And this is why uh, Sony is scared. I think they're take, they're finally taking note. And they're like, yo. What? Come on. Why would they be still? Like, they're not competing with Nintendo, though. Like, they are. This, are it, they no, said it's not. They are, man. You gotta accept I just, it. I don't Sony so. fans have to accept Dude, that. Dude, it's a handheld, though. They're, they're they're fighting for exclusivities, man. Yeah, this is it. This is that's gonna be the next battle is exclusives. Well, Sony's exclusives are better than Nintendo's, so 
Sales to tell you. <laughs> you know, wow. yeah, you're, you're damn right about that. Oh my god, dude! These games. You know the stupid part about this is, is most of these games are still like fifty dollars, forty dollars too. It's like they're not. It's not like they're selling like Sony's exclusives that are ten bucks a piece. Like they're like they're literally still almost full price. Like and they're still selling like crazy. I don't. Nintendo's got a grip on our balls or something, man. Like. Man, I don't, I don't get it. But you know, more power to them, man. Like Nintendo is doing their thing. I'm glad to see them th- thriving. Cause not too long ago, three, four years ago, we all thought they were dead and they were gonna become a, you know, a third party publisher, you know, of of games. No more hardware from them. So I'm happy to see them turn it around. Personally, yeah. But now we're gonna see a bad side of them. I feel like we're gonna see a lot more microtransactions. I mean, you're right about that, man, yeah. dude. I, you know. Animal Crossing is going to have... We're going to talk about that game when it comes out because there is going to be a microtransaction controversy around yeah, that game. it is. Like, guaranteed when it comes out. Like, I don't even think it's... I don't have a question about it. So, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. A lot of games selling. All right, let's move on to our final segment of the week. Game... Uh, new game releases. So, there's a lot of shit coming out this week, but... Uh, nothing like really big. I'd say the biggest thing is probably like Vanquish and Bayonetta coming back on, on these consoles. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I'm going to be a degenerate and buy those. And I, I want to play, I never played Vanquish, so. Oh, you will love that game. I probably need to, right? Love that game. I feel like it's like a requirement for my gamer cred. Uh, and I think, uh, the Devil May Cry on Switch is getting re-released as well. Yep, I see that as well. Uh, uh, as we talked about before, Kingdom Hearts uh, on Xbox One. Yeah, so the uh, thing about that Devil May Cry 3 special edition on the Switch is uh, not only did they change the style of the, not the style of the game, but at the beginning of each mission on the Devil May Cry 3 special edition on the on the original mm-hmm. and on the Xbox One and PS4 versions, you had to pick two styles and right. go through that mission with those two styles. On this mm-hmm. one, they made all styles available to you. You don't have to select mm-hmm. at all. Um, also, they also in the Bloody Palace, which is like a almost like a horde style uh, thing. You go up to tiers and levels. They made it two players locally, mm-hmm. local co-op, so you can play one person can play Dante, one person can play uh, Virgil. And Bloody Palace locally. Right. So right. I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I will say on Tuesday next week, uh, Mega Man Zero slash ZX oh, Legacy Collection. So your life is over. Hell yeah, man. I'm ready, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I actually don't know if I want to play it right away, but I'm definitely <laughs> buying it next week. So um, we'll see about that. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Any other games you want to talk about on here? Uh, no, that that's it. Mention? All right, cool. We're going to call it there, guys. Uh, So if you like this episode, please like the episode, review the episode, subscribe to the show on whatever feed you are listening to it on, and please share it with your friends. If you'd like to interact with either of us on Twitter, you can do so at ITrap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I am at ThunderNet01, and the show is at the player's take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can send us an email to theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. Next week's episode... Who knows? Hopefully, Sony announces the uh, the announcement, you know, conve- or uh, God conference for the PS5. Because God damn it, we need something. We need something to get us jazzed. But uh, otherwise, I don't know. Whatever news comes out, uh, more game talk. I'm sure. So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we will see you on the next one. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>